So here we are on the admin portal and what we're going to do here is take a look at uh, the various menus that are available to us. Here we have user management and all these menus are set up pretty much in the same way we're able to search, report and manipulate data. Uh, parking management which has to do with uh, vehicles and permits etc. Violations which has to do with uh, violations. You can enter violations from the admin portal. You can search for them. You can set up your offense types. You can run reports as we mentioned earlier and you can manipulate data in regards to appeals etc. The next portion is payments where we can search for daily payments. We can run uh, analytics on all of that uh, information that we get in our, these reports. Again there are uh, multiple reports uh, that we can find in the system so we can report on a number of different things within finance. Okay, Permits, uh, this has to do with setting up your sales windows when permits go on sale, when they become active, etc. and when they expire. We also have the ability to do run some uh, permit invoices for companies if you set them up within the system. And these last two menu items that you're seeing here, uh, which are system configuration and options, these are typically set when you first set up the system where you're able to manage your user roles. In this case these are admin users and you can add them, uh, add admins and you can add groups to those and you can manage the roles that those admin players have. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. Uh, and we can, this is where also we would be setting up any system uh, information such as system messaging, uh, notices that go out, email, templates, etc. And the very last option here is the admin options and this is where you're going to be setting up your pick lists. So there would be things like vehicle uh, user types, vehicle types and colors and makes etc. Uh, we have certain things in the system groups and zones that we can uh, help us manage lots. Uh, and so this is where you would be setting up all those sort of building blocks of your system. So now we can start to set up a lot for this user to be able to purchase a permit in. So we're going to go into the parking management uh, menu item and go to lot administration. I'm going to go to pricing and lot administration. So here we have all our lots that we currently have in the system. And you'll notice that we have monthly lots, yearly lots. We don't have any semestered lots in this particular uh, setup and we have other lots. So these are all referring to time frames. Obviously monthly and yearly and semestered are self-explanatory. But for the other lots you could set these up for if you had let's say in your organization a six-month training period where people were coming in you could create up uh, a sales window that lasted six months or you can do in the case of some of our permanent employees that might be staying with the company long term, you can set up a long term uh, sales window that might be 10 years long or something like that. You can renew it every 10 years rather than bothering to uh, change people month by month. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a new lot. And there's some things in here that we're going to take a look at in the general tab right away. Uh, this is where we can set up a lot and basically all we need to do is create a, a name for it and we're just going to call this new lot just so that we can find it later and we like to have a short form name for it so we're going to use NL there and we want this lot obviously to be visible to users and we also want it to uh, be for staff members only in this case so I'm holding the control key down and I'm selecting staff members okay so now the difference here between common lots and user types, if I created this as a common lot it just means it doesn't affect any user type, anybody can park in there. The way I'm setting it up right now, only admin, uh, or, sorry, only uh, staff members and executives will be actually able to see this lot. So I'm just going to hit upload to save that. Now there are some other tabs here, essentially I've set this uh, lot up now to be part of the system. So now I have to go in and add some information to it as to whether I want it to be standard permits or temporary permits or both. So we just to give you an idea of what's in the tabs here, this zone information uh, and location, this is where you would put in a description type of where the lot is and you're able to set it up on a map, uh, create a, so if I wanted to drop a marker in as to where that, that lot is, I can do that and it'll keep track of that and give me GPS locations, etc. And I can save that. 
And then I'm just going to look at the standard permit tab. So this is where you're going to start setting up your, your costs for this particular lot. So we're going to charge $100, just to make it easy, for this particular lot. You have some choices here as to whether the lot can be prorated, whether it can be used for a second permit. If the lot is fairly small, you probably don't want to allow people to have multiple permits in it, but it is possible to toggle that on and off. Okay, so we'll, we'll set that. And we'll also set that this lot can have a waiting list. Now, uh, again, we have these time frames here, and we're going to select monthly for this lot. So that we're creating a monthly lot with a $100 fee uh, per month. Now, if there was a access card or any type of rentals or anything like that in here, you can select uh, a deposit for that. If there was a physical access card, you were able to toggle that as well. And if the lot has printable hang tags. Now, this means that the end user would be potentially able to print uh, their own hang tags. So I'm going to update that lot. So now I have set it up for standard permits. I can also uh, select to have it set up for temporary permits. Uh, in which case I can decide how many spots per day I'm going to set up as a temporary uh, permit and I'm just going to put a $15 charge on that. We can also break it down into hourly, so three, let's say six and nine and then anything over that gets charged at the daily rate. Okay. Now if I wanted this to be temporary only I can click this but I don't necessarily want to do that. I want to service both in this one lot. Then you have the choices as to whether you want to allow the permits to be used for up to 30 days or over 30 days. In which case, if it's over 30 days, you would need to put in a monthly cost here so that it calculates uh, that monthly cost plus the extra days. Now, you can also, if it's a temporary lot, if you're going over 30 days, allow a person to use more than one vehicle. So this, if we toggle this on, it automatically applies the permit to all vehicles that are on the person's uh, profile. So I can update that and save that information. LPR settings, uh, we won't get into that today, but basically this is it's where you would set up a group and a free time for uh, license plate recognition. So now if we go back here to our lot admin, we're going to see that that new lot is in here. We've selected it to be visible. We can also see the user types that we've selected to have, be able to have access to that lot. And we're seeing here that there are zero uh, permits at the moment. So how do we add permits to this lot? Well, again, we go back up into the our parking management and back to lot administration. And then we go into allocate. Okay, so we're going to scroll down here till we get to the monthly lots and we're going to find our new lot here and again the total permits that are in there are zero at the moment. So how do we enter uh, permits? Let's take a look at the lot first to see that here's the listing of it and we have some information on the lot but as you can see there are no permits uh, yet uh, associated to that lot. So we're going to go into add permits here. And there are two different ways to add permits. If you had already established permits, you could enter them in here from a cut and paste from a spreadsheet, or you can simply uh, start to put in permits. They don't necessarily have to be in sequential order in this case, if you had already printed uh, permits, or if you had some that had uh, alphanumeric char characters, you can do that as well. And then you can add those into the lot. All right. We're not going to do that for today. What we're going to do is use this tool here where we're going to add a prefix and we're going to start our permits at 100 and we're going to go to 120. Okay, so easy way to uh, enter permits into the lot. We have the, the range set up, we have a prefix set up, and we're just going to add those permits into the lot. And here we see that set of permits that are now permits to be created. So we can put them into the lot. Now, if we scroll down, take a look at that lot again now that we have permits in it, you can see that they are all in this lot. There are some things that you can do in here as well. We can make some of these not available, and we may want to do that to preserve some permits so that they can be uh, allocated by an admin at their discretion. So uh, the public will be able to see all these permits, but admins will also be able to see these permits but they will see them privately. The public does not see that. Okay, so now once we have that done, this lot is ready to purchase a permit in. So let's go to the user. And our user that we usually choose is Mr. Bennett. 
and we're going to go into his profile here. So here we see what, uh, back to uh, Paul Bennett's profile, we see the permits that he now has, but what we're going to do is we're going to log in as that user, and we're going to purchase a permit from this new lot that we just created. All right, so here we are logged in as the user, and as you can see, we're seeing the same information that we saw on the dashboard on the admin side uh, for the user as well. And we have the ability to add vehicles, uh, uh, run appeals, etc. So we're going to go into permits. These disclaimers are configurable by you. They can be whatever you wish. You can have them pop up or choose not to have them. But typically, most of our clients do uh, put up a bit of a disclaimer uh, in terms of when you're purchasing a permit, some of the legal information that goes with that. And if you're adding vehicles, it could be things such as that the organization is not responsible for valuables in a person's vehicle, etc. So those kinds of informational pop-ups can happen in, within the system. They don't necessarily have to be disclaimers. They can be just informational as well. So I'm going to hit agree there so that it allows me to continue on. And now you're going to see all these lots that are available to a staff member to be able to purchase. So some of them will be common lots. Uh, so the bicycle lot, for example, is a common lot. But most of these you'll see that are uh, staff lots, etc. You may have a, a general lot that a staff member can park in as well. However, uh, typically all of these are set up to be uh, staff only. So you can see here that we have our three components. We have our standard permit, we have our temporary permit and the fees that go along with that, and our waiting list. So in this case, we're just going to uh, purchase a standard permit. We're going to reserve the permit. Now, in the case of the ad uh, admin portal, uh, an admin can actually uh, allocate a specific permit to a person. But if it's on the user side here, uh, they're going to get just the next permit in line. The other thing that we see in here is that this person has a violation that is awaiting payment. If it's before its due date, uh, we can actually toggle that off so that we only pay for the permit. If it was over its due date, uh, we would not be able to toggle that, that piece off. So we would have to pay for that violation before we can purchase the permit or with the permit. Okay, now there's different things that we can do here. Uh, at this point, you're going to be choosing a payment type. Uh, so it could be Visa, in which case it would fo follow through and it would just be like you were buying something off of Amazon. It would present you with a credit card information uh, window that you can fill out and then complete the purpose of the purchase. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, select cash because I want to show you one of the things that the, the promise to pay. So if you're paying by debit or cash or that type of thing, it's typically called a promise to pay. And it would have to be processed by the admin once it's been uh, processed through here. So, and we'll show you that uh, process as we go. So I'm going to submit the payment. I can confirm it, make sure that the, the totals are all proper, that my permit is the one that I want. I can take a look at the permit I'm all, uh, and, and check its uh, information there, and then I can confirm the payment. Okay, so I, I get a payment has been recorded, but it's not yet processed, as I mentioned earlier, but I do get a, an informational window telling me that that permit is uh, in, in process. So let's go back to the admin side and have a look at this person's uh, profile again. Now you'll notice that the permit is not yet here because it hasn't been uh, processed by the admin yet. So let's take a look at all records. And if we scroll down here, we're going to see uh, the permit is here and it's, it's ready to be uh, to be paid for. Okay, so I can see that it's cash, and what will happen there is the individual will come, will come into the office and hand over the cash. Now at this point, if they decide to pay by debit, you could change the payment type. Uh, if they decide to pay by student account, etc. But we're going to process it through as a cash payment just to make sure that it goes through. Okay, so now the payment has been made and we have the refund button here. So that tells us that the purchase is complete. If we want to refund it, we can do so. But in this case, we're just going to accept that payment. And let's go back to the profile. And now we see that they have this <coughs> uh, permit here as a valid permit. 